Hey guys, it's Katie. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we are going to be talking about my favorite ships of all time. As you can imagine, this was really hard to narrow down and the ordering was probably the most frustrating part of all. But without further ado, here are my top 10 favorite ships. And you guys are probably going to be kind of surprised that there's nothing from Artemis Fowl, Aragon, or Harry Potter on here, but I just really was not all that invested with ships on those. Coming in at number 10, we have Luca and Creel from Dragon Slippers by Jessica Day George. Now this is one of only two non-YA ships on this list. Dragon Slippers was one of the first series outside of like the popular like Harry Potter, Twilight kind of things that I read and it was a Sunshine State book back in sixth grade and I just fell in love with the characters and with these two characters in particular. Creel and Luca had one of my first kind of happy we can't be together but we want to be where they had a happy ending series. Um, the two just had such a great dynamic and because they couldn't be together they were just best friends for such a long time even though everyone around them knew and it was just oh it was so good. In the number nine slot we have Jude and Britt from Black Ice by Becca Fitzpatrick. I know there are a lot of mixed feelings about this book within the fandom. I know not everybody loves it, but I really, really enjoyed it. And most of all, I loved Jude and Britt's dynamic. I think for Britt, um, it was kind of mentioned in the book, but it was just so important for her to find someone who made her feel empowered instead of helpless. And that was the distinctive thing about Jude is that when she was with him, she felt more capable instead of more needy. And it was so good and let her really like come into herself and not have to pretend or let herself fall into the damsel in distress mode like she did with everyone else. And for Jude, of course, you know, he's going through this really difficult time and wanting to fix everything, but kind of struggling because he doesn't really know what to do. And I think that Brit provides a really strong, stable person for him to be working with and traveling with and kind of to make sure that he doesn't fall apart because he's not alone. And I think their dynamic was amazing, and them finally being able to be together at the end was so wonderful. Ah! Coming in at number eight, we have Lysandra and Adian from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass, the queen who literally owns my soul. Lysandra and Adian have both had such a hard time having to pretend to be someone that they're not and doing things that just kind of feel like they're ripping away little pieces of like them and their hearts this whole time and I really think that they could be so good for each other because they so understand the positions that they've been put in and the things that they've had to do for the sake of keeping themselves or their families alive and I really really love the dynamic that they have together. I'm pretty sure I screamed out loud when he told her that they were gonna get married while she was the sea dragon. Oh my god. And just imagining like Lysandra and Aelin being related and like getting to pull pranks on the boys at like Thanksgiving and stuff. I would love to see that. Coming in at number seven on this list is the other non-YA and that is Ella and Char from Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I have loved Ella Enchanted for as long as I can remember. I read the book so long before I ever saw the movie and it was so well written. Um, the characters were just so fun and Ella and Char just have this great great dynamic where they're both willing to do so much for each other. Ella is literally willing to relinquish her freedom because she knows that she could hurt Char and the thought is just so unbearable and Char even after not understanding what happened and thinking that she hated him and that she had broken his heart for so long. The minute he knew it was her, he was so ready to just be together. I mean, they slid down stair rails together and he saved her from ogres and then she saved him from ogres. It's, oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful pairing and I just love it. And it's one of the first ships that I think I could have ever loved. At number six, we have Connor and Risa from the Unwind Dystology by Neil Schusterman. The romance between Connor and Risa is very subtle, very understated, 
And honestly, not a lot of it is there because they were apart for so long in the second and third books. But I just love it. I think that makes it even better that they're just really such good friends and they work so hard together and they're trying to find their freedom while also like kind of falling in love, but they don't know if they can afford to be in love right then because who knows if they'll live to see tomorrow. The Unwind series was just always such a big thing for me and Connor and Risa were such a huge part of that and the way they cared for each other even though things were so hard, the way they kind of worked together and they kind of made it through together and even when they were apart it was like thinking of each other and things like that that kind of got them through and they found their way back and made sure that they could both be okay in the end and I just really really loved the dynamic and I think that understated romances in the middle of bigger plots are one of my favorite things to read or to see in movies because I don't I don't want the romance to be the main storyline but I want it to be there and I think that's how it should be in life you know like it's not all about the person that you love but they're there every step of the way. Now we're getting to the more predictable ones on this list. Coming in at number five is Heron Greystairs from the Clockwork Princess Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare. I have never been able to ship Tessa with either Will or Jem because I just love them both so much. This is the only love triangle I have ever been okay with and I just love both of these men so much. I love Tessa so much and I love the dynamic between the three of them. Oh my god, has there ever been such a well-written dynamic? I just, when you look at the lines, when Jem finds out that Will has been in love with his fiance this whole time and he's not mad he's just so glad and so relieved because now he knows that neither of them will be alone and that they will both be able to keep each other safe that is the healthiest thing i think their love is so pure they all want so badly not to hurt each other and the way that it happens i've almost never cried that much in a book ever 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 i just I love it. I love it so much. Cassie, you've ruined me. Coming in at number four, we have Rowaylin from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. I love this ship so much. I don't understand how so many people hate Rowan because I think he's so good for Aelin. Now don't get me wrong because I absolutely adored Kale and I loved him and I shipped him and Selena for so long but that's exactly it. I shipped him with Selena and Aelin is more than just that. She has so many complex facets within her that Kale just couldn't love in the same way and that's fine, that's okay. But I think Rowan was so there for her and my favorite, favorite, favorite kind of relationship is always built on friendships and that's all top four of mine are built on friendships because they're just so so important and I think that you, whoever you love should be your best friend in the whole world and that's the healthiest way and I love that her and Rowan kind of came in both bitter and angry and kind of not giving a fuck about the world and together they kind of grew and healed and were just best friends and they would care in him and it just it took them so long to realize what they felt for each other and to figure out about the fucking mating bond because they were just so close already that it just it was no different and I love that. Sarah J Mass just writes such beautiful characters and beautiful relationships and the way that they happen is really great and it never fails to surprise me but I, I love it so much and Rowaylin was just so well done. It was over such a long period book wise that it was just really good and frustrating but in the best kind of way and I think it's just so good for both of these characters and that they're so good for each other and if I start to talk about the end of Empire Storms I'm gonna cry so we are not gonna go there but you know. Coming in at number three we have Gemma from the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. Julian and Emma just oh I don't understand I have never started a book so in love with the ship right from the beginning in my whole life like I said I love 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 the friends to lovers dynamic and it was so well done in this one obviously when we finished City of Heavenly Fire we knew this was coming but the way it was done was so brilliant 
and there were just so many ups and downs and emotions within this one book. I can't even imagine the rest of the series, but I just, I love the way they are so intertwined that it almost feels like you don't know where one character ends and when the other begins. They're so in sync with each other. They know everything about each other and I just, I love it. It's so perfect. They work so well. They know each other. They love each other and you just, you know, you can't imagine one by themselves. Gemma is endgame. If you ship Mark with Emma, I... no. No. And the number two ship spot, we have Face Sand from the Accord of Thorns and Roses trilogy by Sarah J. Mass. Sarah, my queen. I remember reading A Court of Thorns and Roses and hearing people talk about like this like love triangle and I was like, what triangle? Reese showed up for two minutes. I don't care about him. Reese and is one of my favorite male protagonists to ever exist. Feyre and Reese and's story was so well done. The way that they fell in love and at least for Feyre, she didn't really realize it was happening until it was so far in. Oh, the way that Reese never pushed her. He knew and he loved her already, but if it was what made her happy, he was so willing to give it to her and he just wanted to check up and make sure that she was happy and never came until he knew that she needed him. The fact that they both saved each other under the mountain, the way they interact now, the way that they discuss anything and everything and make each other feel like they are of worth and of purpose. It's just, it's so beautiful, so wonderfully written, and so enjoyable to read about. I just love Face Sand so much. And coming in at number one will probably mean no surprise to anyone is Persebeth from the Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. I seriously doubt that anything will ever top Persebeth as my favorite ship. This is the OTP of all of my OTPs. I just love Percy and Annabeth's dynamic. I love that they were friends, best friends, for years before they got together. And when they did get together, it's not like a whole lot really changed other than that they were in a relationship. You know, they still love each other. They still love their friends. They still hang out and his mom makes them blue cookies. I just, I love them. I think they're so good for each other. They're so different and they're so compatible because their strengths are so different. They work together so well. I don't think it's possible to top a couple that literally went through hell together. Hell. Hell. I just, obviously we all saw it coming for the first five books, but it was so wonderful when it did happen. They're so good for each other. They never doubt each other. They love and trust and care for each other whether they're together or not. And it took them so long to finally confess that they wanted to be and then it was so great and even though Percy got kidnapped and everything went to shit, it was just such a wonderful dynamic. The whole second series getting to see them interact together as a couple through everyone else's eyes as well as their own was so wonderful and I just can't imagine loving a couple as much as I love Percy Beth. So that is it for my top 10 favorite ships. Let me know what you think. Have a good one.